People who think we should keep nuclear weapons see those weapons in a particular way. They have a mindset that conditions the way they see the problem. For instance, they see nuclear weapons as impossible to get rid of, necessary, a permanent part of the landscape. When someone talks about getting rid of nuclear weapons, they shake their head sadly and say, you're an idealist. I admire your idealism, but you can't disinvent nuclear weapons, you know. Or sometimes they use the more colorful version of this argument, which is, you can't stuff the nuclear genie back in the bottle. This argument has won debates for 50 years. Its power comes from the fact that it is absolutely true. You can't disinvent nuclear weapons. It also happens to be entirely irrelevant. Technology goes out of existence. It just doesn't go out of existence by being disinvented. It goes out of existence one of two ways. One, better technology comes along, or two, people realize it was dumb technology to begin with and they abandon it. Consider the penny farthing. These 19th century bicycles were difficult to get up on and dangerous to fall off of, but no one said, you can't stuff the penny farthing genie back in the bottle. When better bicycles came along with two wheels the same size, penny farthings just went out of existence. Or for instance, look at this pram from England in 1938. I don't know if you can see this. If you look closely, you'll see that mom is wearing a gas mask and junior is inside a hermetically sealed chamber with a small window so he can look up and see this guy in some kind of a gas mask chimney to breathe through. This technology did not have to be disinvented. It was dumb technology. No one wanted to take Junior for a walk in the middle of a chemical weapons attack. This is the Hiller VZ-1 invented by the US military in 1953. It is amazing technology. A small helicopter blade underneath whirls around at high speed, it can lift a single soldier 15 to 20 feet up into the air. It's really <laughs> remarkable technology. Of course, some people called it the here I am, I'm completely exposed, vulnerable death platform, which may account for why it never caught on. The question is not whether nuclear weapons can or cannot be disinvented. The question is whether they're good military technology, whether they're smart military technology. On the face of it, that seems unlikely since no one has found a reason to want to use them in almost 70 years. This is a story about a confusion, but it's a useful story, an important story to keep in mind, I think, because it's psychologically suggestive. In the minds of people who want to keep nuclear weapons, in this story, nuclear weapons are the genie. Nuclear weapons are magic. Rub the lamp, wave your nuclear weapon around, and people will do whatever you say. But we all know there is no magic. There's nothing inevitable about nuclear weapons. Weapons are kept based on whether they're useful technology or not. If you think about nuclear weapons pragmatically, rather than being seduced by awe or horror, you see that they are fundamentally not very good weapons. There is, in fact, a relatively strong case for banning them. Not because nuclear weapons are immoral, although they surely are. Not because nuclear weapons are dangerous, although that danger is certain beyond doubt. But because nuclear weapons are not just immoral and dangerous, they are immoral dangerous and clumsy weapons. Nuclear weapons are too big, too blundering, too outmoded, too messy for any conceivable purpose. We've been told for so long that nuclear weapons are awesome that the reality has gotten lost. The reality is they're not very good weapons. The first problem is they're messy. You drop a nuclear weapon on your enemy's troops and the radiation can blow back on your own troops. This is the famous study from 1976 done by 
Frank von Hippel and Sidney Drell, two American physicists, who tried to uh, construct a hypothetical Soviet limited attack on U.S. targets, uh, it limited to just nuclear missile silos, nuclear submarine bases, and air bases. And what's the result of this carefully, surgi carefully calibrated surgical strike? 20 million people die. Even when you try to use nuclear weapons in a limited way, millions die. Nuclear weapons are like a bull in a china shop, so big that they break things even when they don't mean to. You want to destroy a target in a city. You have to destroy three quarters of the city to do it. We don't often think about it, but nuclear weapons are weapons with enormous limitations. The whole trend in warfare is away from bigger, more blundering weapons toward more precise, more intelligent, smaller weapons. Nuclear weapons increasingly are working against the tide of history. This is what the future looks like. This is a four-inch drone called the Black Hornet Nano. It has a, it's a tiny drone that has a small camera in it and flies around the battlefield and peeks behind obstacles. Increasingly, nuclear weapons look like dinosaurs from the distant past. I'm not saying that nuclear weapons are not dangerous. A clumsy giant is still enormously dangerous. But nuclear weapons are not the apocalypse. The apocalypse is a myth and magic. Nuclear war would be horrible beyond our ability to imagine. But we don't need to exaggerate that possibility. The reality is bad enough. If nuclear weapons are magic, then proliferation is inevitable and abolition is impossible. Who would want to give up magic weapons? But if nuclear weapons are overly large, clumsy, blundering, expensive, 70-year-old, outmoded, bull-in-a-china-shop technology, then the prospects for abolition look entirely different. If nuclear deterrence is prone to fail, and we know it is, then we dare not rely on it for our safety and security. In the past, we thought nuclear weapons were necessary, that we were stuck with them. It turns out that that necessity is no more solid than a cardboard box. Dangerous, clumsy weapons are not necessary. Nuclear weapons did not coerce Japan into surrendering at the end of World War II. Nuclear deterrence is not safe and reliable. It could fail and has failed. And nuclear weapons are not an inevitable necessity. We can do with them what we choose. They are tools, not genies that loom over us. We were misled into thinking that nuclear weapons were miracle weapons. Fear blinded us to their flaws, and we convinced ourselves that they're inevitable. But they're none of these things. The stories that we've been telling ourselves about nuclear weapons for 60 years are not true. And this is good news because it means that this is a problem that can be solved. Smart people, innovative people, don't hang on to outmoded technology. If we change the way that we think about nuclear weapons, we can deal with them in a sensible way, not in a hundred years, but in our lifetimes. Increasingly, people are beginning to understand that nuclear weapons are not miracle weapons. They are bull-in-a-china-shop weapons, too clumsy in the long run to be useful. We have believed for too long that we were gripped by nuclear weapons by a fate that we could not control. It turns out that nuclear weapons are smaller, less formidable than we thought. They are tools in a way, weapons that we can choose to use or not. As we decide, we are in control.
of our future. If we look at nuclear weapons and forget the Cold War mindset, we are in a position to find solutions to these problems, real solutions that can make us safer and more secure. The solutions are waiting. We should find them. Thank <laughs> you.